Hi, in this instructional video, I'm going to show you how I go about finding initial settings for me to test in my demo portfolio. Now, as you might know, we have a fantastic database of over 180 trading accounts, trading various robots, and we monitor the results, we monitor the settings on a regular basis. So here is an example of the database that exists and we and the results that are being achieved. Furthermore, we not only do that, but we also give the actual settings used by those 180 accounts and we give you an analysis of the results that are being achieved by the settings. Very comprehensive database. The database is only available on our paid forum and our paid members have full access to this database. Now, why I mention this database is by studying the database, we have come up with ratios for settings such as the gap size. Now, the gap size is one of the most critical settings for this kind of trading. And we have then related that those gap sizes to a free tool that is available and it's called the Trend Analyzer and it's on your screen there. So it will look at the trends that have developed in the various currencies and it will also then look at the longest trend that has been experienced by that particular currency. And what we have found is that Taking this longest trend and dividing it by 10 is a good starting point for the gap size. Now the gap size can be smaller if you are using a multiplier and you'll see a bit more about that. But that's the, a fantastic starting point for gap size establishment. So you don't have to look at the database and all that type of thing. I have done that for you and I've created this ratio that all you need to know is that you look at the longest trend and you then divide it by 10 and that gives you a starting point. That's all you need to know. Now this tool is freely down, downloadable as I've mentioned before. The, here is the video that you can go and have a look at to download this tool. And on this video you will see that we have now passed the 70,000 subscriber barrier. We have passed it yesterday in fact and we've moved from 65,000 earlier this month to 70,000. And one of the great pushes here is the launch of the Bell Trader. So what I'm going to show you is a, a, a very, very important step that you need to follow to get the optimum gap sizing. So let's go and have a look at some of the test accounts that I've already established. So this six platform package from the Dipgate VPS service, I have six accounts and you can have a look at the accounts uh, i've in fact got 16 because i'm trading another 10 on another package so let's just have a look at this particular account and see how i established the settings so we'll open that up and these accounts have literally been running for a day or two so uh, the activity is not that much but this account is nasty positive along with uh, most of the other accounts so let's have a quick look at what happens yeah so here are the settings that I'm using right now it's uh, based on a 30 uh, minute setting a uh, look back period of, th of 300 and then we have this initial deviation of one now what does that all mean and I'm going to show you what it means because this is the most important part of this video and then I've got deviation multipliers, which I'll explain, and then initial lots that I'm using to start with and initial uh, multiplier that I'm applying to those lots. And then I've got the basket target. Those are the most important settings that you need to really worry about. So let's have a look at how this gap is determined. Okay, so I've opened the chart for this particular platform. Here is the trading going on. You can see it's very sideways, so that's why there's only been one trade so far. I think it was around about there. And uh, so what you need to do is we have a setting of one deviation. What you need to do is come to this graph and then look at the, different, the distance between the the middle line the middle line over there the that's that dotted line and the first d 
deviation line on your chart because they will vary uh, depending on your settings but how you check if you've got a reasonable settings is you actually measure that distance and I'm going to just measure that distance here and you can see that's 11 so I'll just measure again downwards yeah it's about 11 so uh, so that is the g initial gap size in pips in pips that I'm using now to, just to take you back to the basic concept of the standard deviation bell is that most of the action happens between the middle line and one then then two is the next uh, area where some action happens and then between two and three very little action happens so what you want to do you want to set your gap sizing up firstly to make sure that it makes sense in terms of pips then you need to apply the multiplier to make sure that you reach the third level roughly after 10 deviation lines and this will make more sense let me let, let me show you okay so here's a calculation I've got that one deviation there we're going to increase it by 1.4 uh, is the multiplier so I mul I'll do that I'll do that and as you can see it reaches level 3 after 10 now that is a good guideline because the price should not deviate further than level 3 of the standard deviation calculation so this is the playing field for this particular strategy and therefore I'm happy that this that that, that gap sizing and that multiplier is sound you need to do this kind of calculation for your for your settings that you are using but now how do we relate the 11 pips to the trendiness calculation that I showed you further so let's go and have a look at that okay so here's the slide that you saw earlier and we are looking at the euro pound that's what's being traded and we say there's the distances of the trends that are anticipated and the longest trend was 217 so now uh, if we divide that by 10 we get 21 so 21 should actually be the pips that we use for these gaps but because we're using a multiplier in that process it is okay to go a little bit lower not higher lower so it, so in this case we've gone to 11 so the multiplier will bring the pip gap up so that after 10 year, 10 trades the average gap will be round about 21 but you want small gaps in the beginning because that's when most of the cash cashing in and transactions happen and there are fewer transactions the further you go away so this is a very important point download this indicator look at that number there uh, and uh, divide it by 10 and then you can go anywhere from 50 percent to 100 percent of that number that you got so in this case 11 was roughly 30, uh, 50 percent of the amount that we calculated this is a very important step if you don't do this you will below your account if you go too small or you'll end up having no trades if you go too big so please do not miss this important step where you load your settings go to the chart look at the actual gaps that have been created by your settings and make sure that they are within 10 percent or 5 percent of the longest trend possible if you're using 5 percent you need a multiplier to increase it if you're not using a multiplier then go for 10 percent